fucking going? Jesus Christ. Welcome to Garb Theater. So, uh, I have an immediate need. I have the rest of the Summer Midnight look in the works. I have a bunch of other videos in the works, too. Um, but I had something come up. And honestly, if you thought this channel was going to deliver anything timely or in order... So, my immediate need. So, I've said before that I, I work from home. And I've had this idea of kind of um, elevated houseware apparel kind of rolling around in the back of my head. I was not prepared at all to execute any of that stuff yet, but something came up. So my spouse and I just adopted our newest baby. Charlie is a middle age special needs parrot. We adopted him from this awesome rescue called Roseberry. I'll link them in the description. They've been super helpful with this poor guy. He had a rough life before uh, he got rescued. Uh, the poor dude, um, he can't really talk. He can't fly, can't walk. He can barely perch. Um, and that's taken a lot of doing. He can't really see. He just sits in his filth and watches TV all day. So this is Charlie. Um, I've been calling him Boomer because he is a grouchy old fart and um, I don't know, I guess I'm ageist, I'm sorry. Occasionally he'll tolerate a cuddle, but uh, Charlie kind of hates my guts because I'm constantly having to like jam medicine down his throat and wipe his butt and his beak and give him baths. One thing that he does actually like to do is perch on your shoulder. I mean, he tries to perch on your shoulder. He really can't for very long. He's got a bum leg, which is why he can't really walk. But damn it, he really wants to. If anybody out there has ever had a bird, you know that they just shit. They just shit everywhere. But all the shitting doesn't really bother me. Any kind of filth that a bird can produce can easily be remedied with like a dishcloth and a vacuum. The one problem is is when they are on you, you just get covered in shit. They just, they just shit all over you. Especially this old fart who has just absolutely no shame. So I need a house coat to wear when Charlie is on my person. Uh, today we're making a coat um, to be shit on. And depending on whether or not he can actually grip the fabric, I might have to make a shit cape too. All right, so let's get into it. I just want to take a quick sec and mourn my original design intent that will probably never be realized. It was going to be this beautiful piece of work styled after an 18th century men's banyan. It was going to be reversible with black satin and velvet cuffs and then the inside was going to be this super cool fabric from this artist I really love, Riza Pecker. He doesn't even print fabric. I was going to order these like $100 shower curtains from Society6 and it was going to be amazing and totally worth it. But instead, I'll be making a cheap facsimile of this with um, thrift store cast-offs. Oh, don't worry. It's fake. I learned my lesson. <laughs> I just got this beautiful tablecloth from a thrift store. It's kind of a black on black damask. I don't know if you can see that. It's really pretty. I thought this would make a beautiful, I don't know, gown or a corset or something, but um, it's gonna be, it's gonna be shit on. And I wanna line this thing. So I'm gonna use uh, this freaking hideous peach satin. I got this again from the thrift store for like, I don't know, three bucks for a whole bunch of it. Um, I know that this is designed to be shit on, but even I have standards. So I'm gonna try my hand at dyeing this plastic monstrosity and, uh, and we'll see what happens. I'm gonna do my damnedest to follow Nicole Rudolph's instructions uh, for making this thing uh, for when she made an 18th century men's dressing gown. I, I feel like that would be the simplest thing to do. And if I do have to make a cape, I am going to use this. It, this is some outdoor canvas that I bought a while ago for tablecloths for a bridal shower. And then um, a bunch of it got repurposed into my dress form back there. 
and I found some products online called diaper capes that are specifically for birds perching on you. I am not going to buy one of those hideous things, but all of them were made out of like some sort of canvas. So I'm hoping that he'll be able to grip to this pretty easily. I'm also going to attempt to dye this too. So maybe it'll coordinate with the other fabrics in the dressing gown. I'm going to look like a fucking insane person, aren't I? A crazy person with a handicap and continent bird. All right. I am preparing everything to dye this ugly crap. Uh, I went to my thrift store and I found this big aluminum pot. It's for frying a turkey. I also bought some utensils. I have never successfully actually dyed anything before. I have attempted to dye things before. The success has been zero. So what I bought for the dye is this Rit Synthetic. I bought Sapphire Blue. I think this plus this might get me some sort of neutral color. And that's really all I could ask for. So, um, all right, let's do it. Added my dish soap and my dye. I wet the fabric down in my extremely scoured sink. Right, here goes nothing. Okay, so this fabric is not gonna move freely. That's fine. Look at this shit. Oh my God, I've made, I have achieved gray. A beautiful pewter gray. I don't know if I wanna keep going and just see what happens, but this is exactly what I was hoping for. Okay, this is edging on almost too blue. So I'm gonna call it and rinse this thing out. All right, man, I hope this comes out because this is such a pretty color. Ugh. I'm so excited. All right, I'm gonna throw this in my wash. I, re I really hate to throw away like this whole thing of dye bath, but I, I don't have anything else that I want blue. As a garbage person. I hate wasting stuff. If anybody has any suggestions on like how I can save this or reuse it or something, like please let me know. All right, so I got this stuff washed and dried and ironed. You can see this is the color I started with. God, it looks so nice. So I think I've decided that uh, I still don't like how shiny this side is. This is a this is a lining material, but I think I've decided I'm gonna use the back side as the side that's gonna be facing out. After watching Nicole's video again, I marked up and cut out the outer fabric. I only deviated from Nicole's pattern in that I didn't have to do any piecing on the sides, and I just extended the side seam all the way to the edge of my fabric to try to make the rope flare out as much as I could. Okay, I don't know how I keep doing this. I, I guess it's because I buy janky, crappy fabric from the thrift store, but I try to cut with the pattern and for some reason, the rain is just, it's just off. Like I, I wrestled with this for a while and I don't know what happened. Like half of this uh, tablecloth is wider than the other half, even though the pattern goes straight. I don't know, anyway. So that's kind of a problem. All right, I got everything cut out. I got the side seams pinned together. I still haven't quite figured out how I'm gonna tackle these sleeves. After I evened them up, uh, they're something like seven inches shorter than I really wanted them to be. So I have these scraps that after I evened these up are about six inches. So uh, I think I'm gonna do something like I don't know, sew two of them together like that. And then like make an extension like here. I'm gonna kick that can down the road. I'm gonna sew up the side seams on the outer fabric. I'm gonna cut the middle and the neckline on the lining and then sew the side seams on that. And attach the outer and lining fabric together along the center front opening. Then once I get to the point where I'm sewing the seams for the sleeves to the inside of this, then I will figure out how I'm going to attach that. I turned everything right side out. Let me see if I can explain this cuff. 
that I took like five hours to figure out yesterday. So here is the finished one. I have the inner and outer fabrics pinned together now. I kind of opened up the seam and laid them flat to pin them together. So now I'm gonna make the actual cuff itself. So I have this strip of scrap fabric. I'm gonna sew the two pieces long ways first. So I have a piece that will be the inner part of the cuff and a piece that will end up being the outer part of the cuff. I stitched the two strips together and then I did put an under stitch so the seam rolls inward and you don't see the stitching. I got my cuff strips sewn together. I stitched the seam, then I sewed the seam allowance down to this side, which this is going to be the side of the cuff that's going to be against my arm. And this is going to be the side of the cuff that you will see on the outside. All right, so the next step is with right sides together, I'm going to start pinning the part of the cuff that will eventually be the outside that you see to the unfinished armhole. And uh, because I'm not good at setting sleeves or anything, the technique that I've been doing is I start pinning from the top here, kind of down both sides to the bottom, and I don't cut any of this excess off until I have the thing completely pinned. And then I'll sew this seam. All right, now I have everything pinned all the way around. And so you can see here is the extra right here. So I marked where I need to make a stitch in order for this to just perfectly fit the sleeve underneath. So I'm gonna even up this line a little bit and then run a stitch all the way down here so that I officially have a tube of a cuff that I can then fold over and stitch all the way down. All right, so I made the stitch right here. I didn't unpin all this. I just unpinned enough that I could kind of fold the sleeve up and jam it through the uh, sewing machine and then pinned it all back down. So I opened the seam here and I matched up all of the other seams that are also pinned open. So now I'm gonna run a stitch along the edge of the whole unfinished arm. All right, the last bit of doing this cuff is I'm going to fold this down about a quarter inch or so then fold the whole cuff over and stitch this down right on top of that stitch line there. So all of these ugly seams will be completely encased. I'm going to stitch in the ditch on the outside here, right on the seam of that cuff. All right, there we go two completed cuffs. They are definitely not twins, but they are at least siblings. Weirdly enough, my first one came out better than my second one, uh, probably because it took me five hours to figure it out, and the second one I did in like, I don't know, 30 minutes. All right, we are at the second to the last step. I marked right here at my ankle. I don't know why I cut this so freaking long, so I'm gonna chop this, and I guess I'll just, I don't know, fold each each layer inward and then like do a top stitch there, uh, there's probably a better way to do this i'm not sure i already kind of like closed up all the other seams except for the neck but i really don't think i can pull the entire jacket inside out and then right side out through the neck hole without just destroying it I don't know what went wrong when I was sewing this thing, but the hem went tragically off kilter. So um, I don't like how it looks with the outside stitch anyway. So I'm just gonna rip it out. I'm gonna turn the thing inside out through the neck hole, I guess. And if there's not enough room, I'll just take some of the stitches out of the, uh, out of the front right here to make a little more room but I would rather have an in-case seam anyway. I'm just gonna do it the way that I originally wanted to. <sighs> Holy crap. Okay, so I redid the hem and I'm sure that this is absolutely not something you're supposed to do, but I, um, I basically did a French seam on this. It's much better now. And even though I'm sh it, it's not perfect at all, the billowiness that the 
bulk of the seam is giving inside of the inner and outer fabric, I think is kind of hiding how wonky <laughs> my sewing and this fabric is. So you know what? I am satisfied. <laughs> Alright, home stretch. So now I just have to take the outer in lining neckband pieces and attach them in here. Whew, she is done. I had to recut the collar a couple times because for some reason I kept cutting it too small. So the last time I didn't even measure, I just cut out a big old hunk and folded everything over until it fit and stitched it on kind of poorly, but whatever, it's done. So uh, it came out much more glamorous than I was expecting. I'm gonna go ahead and put on, uh, I think I'm gonna just stick a hook and eye right there. All right, I got my cape fabric uh, washed and dried. I got this in the bargain bin at Joann's like a thousand years ago, but I think I tracked down the same fabric just in a different color. So I put that in the description. So I'm gonna try using this and see what happens. Sorry for the background noise, the Manchester City game is on. So I added the dye, and it seems to have satisfied the dye pot demon. All right, I got it all dyed, and it only dyed the white areas, kind of this uh, mid-tone gray. I think that it came out like this because I only used half of the pack of dye, but I ain't mad at it. It looks all right. I do have a few flaws here and there where the powdered dye, I guess I didn't have it uh, mixed very well. It's good enough for a shit cake. So I guess I'm gonna get this thing ironed and get my pattern pieces all cut out. I did have some struggle getting the pattern pieces to print out the correct size. I actually uh, put all the pattern pieces into uh, Illustrator and resized them there and then printed them out and that seemed to work. All right, I got all my pieces cut out. I think I've decided to use the back side of this canvas as the outside for this little capelet. I think it's just kind of a, a pretty gray. And for the liner, I'm just gonna use some bits of this old bed sheet. Oh, buddy. Oh, buddy. This is Boomer. His given name is uh, Charlie. We still kind of use both names. We had him for uh, maybe about a month or so. You can see his condo behind me. Because of the situation he came from, uh, he's not healthy enough to bird. So we had to think a little bit outside the box. He's an orange wing Amazon parrot. And he is, as far as we know, 52, 53 years old. He's on a lot of medicine. So we are working with him and his doctor to do him as good as possible. So this guy needs a lot of attention, but he's getting there. Yeah. He has an Instagram, by the way. He's not really great at it yet, but he's trying. So that's it. That's the whole thing. <laughs> no. No, sweet boy. He seems to like it, sort of. Did I make anything different than... I mean, kind of not really, but at least this was like sort of free. The satin on the inside of this thing picks up all the lint and the hair from the ground in the apartment and just kind of sticks to the inside. God damn it, I think I'm cursed. This robe 
fucking snags, the outer snags, the lining snags, my dress snags, my cat snags. What kind of sage do I use to get rid of a snag curse? Uh, is this a success? I, uh, I think so. I think I spent a grand total of nine bucks on this thing. It's, it does the job. Oh, here's his sister. There she is. I know this seems very precarious, but neither one of them give two shits about the other. So, I mean, I'm not gonna let, uh, I'm not gonna let his sister babysit him or anything. <gasps> oh, he's taking to the home. very good. Oh, you very well, you wanna go home? Go home. <laughs> okay, buddy. Thanks again for coming to Garb Theater. Once again, I want to shout out my Kofi supporter, my sweet sibling Shu. She actually has her own YouTube channel now. She is an expert in the fashion industry, has been for years, and she's the person I go to for advice on a lot of my projects. So I definitely recommend checking out her channel. Thanks again to Roseberry Rescue for being so good to us and to Charlie. Don't be beholden to the algorithm. Subscribe to this channel if you like it. Don't if you don't. See you next time.